Thank you for joining us again at Coffee Time with Brenda and Friends. Hey everyone, welcome back. We thought we were on a roll with the storytelling, uh, so we thought we would keep going because Brenda mentioned the word possession, and I have a million questions about that. That is always something that I think is most stigmatized and has been done in Hollywood in really awful ways. Um, the idea of being possessed by something or someone. Um, and I think that people have a lot to understand about that. And so I was hoping that you could tell some stories about that today. Like, how, how does this happen? Okay, we're going to take a very light example yet again. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to take one in like a more of a spiritual attachment. We had in the last example how, you know, we can have an attachment of a loved one because mm -hmm. we don't want them to go, which yeah. is very common, you know, if you're asking your dad not to leave and they stay in your field. Yeah. But let's take an example that is very common because I deal with a lot of clients who have this issue. So we go to for surgery and in a hospital setting, there are a lot of lost souls. So people who have died, many people pass away in hospitals or transition with um, say drugs, say morphine. So they don't even know they've passed away. One, one, one word of advice that's coming through is when we have family members that are passing away, we know it's their time, tell them to go to the light. Mm -hmm. We get scared to go to the light when we're on the side. Like we're thinking, oh my God, see if we're going to be judged, all this stuff. Tell them to go to the light or if mm -hmm. they're confused with morphine. I always say, go to the light, go to the light because they'll go into that next transition in life. But sometimes we don't. And these souls get lost. That window, it's like it's almost like a window of opportunity to go to the light, but they don't take it. Yeah, now, it's actually a really good thing to say because we all, most of us have elderly parents that we're trying to juggle. And a lot of them are afraid to go. Mm -hmm. Like they don't want to die. And so they're doing all kinds of things to try to stay here longer, even though their lives are really difficult with different illnesses. Um, yeah, so they're it's scared. A really, it's a yeah. really good tip to say, you know, it's okay. We're all okay. And you're going to be okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you know, it just let go, go to the light yeah. and, and some will re release and, and go to the light. And usually when that happens, you can feel like their, their presence so quickly coming back, mm -hmm. you know, but sometimes when souls or people pass away, um, their body stops working. Now the soul's confused because they don't know where they are. They see the light. They don't go. Now they kind of get trapped. And so you have like lost souls. Mm hmm. They're kind of in between. They don't. Some of them don't even know they're dead. Yeah. So sometimes when uh, we don't really ever die. So when I use that, I'm just using the terms of dying yeah. was we just yeah. transitioned. But let's say we're talking to a soul and they don't even know they've passed away. I'll always say, okay, hit this table. If it doesn't make a noise, it's because you don't have a body anymore. Mm. Your body's done. Mm. You were supposed to go to the world late, but you didn't. Then yeah. they get all confused. Like, when did this happen? Oh, and geez. they don't. And time to them is very different than time is to us. So now a lot of these lost souls walk the earth. The hospitals have a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Now someone living is going for a routine procedure that they need to go under. Um, and pretty well in that state of being under, their auric field is very open for walk-ins. So you're just talking about under anesthetic. Under like anesthetic, that's right. Yeah. You're out, right? So you're out for half an hour, two hours, three hours. That leaves you very vulnerable for a lost soul to come into your energy field because they need an energy source. Oh, wow. So you wake up. And now you have this sweet old man's energy <laughs> in your field. He's not here to hurt you. Mm -hmm. He's just confused and needed a source of energy. Mm -hmm. So you start to recover from your surgery. Sometimes we take longer to recover when we have a spiritual attachment. Mm -hmm. We're more tired. We're feeling cold. There's something off because we're getting, the, our energy is being tapped by this spiritual attachment. Is there anything we can do to protect ourselves when we go? Because, you know, some, when we go to surgery, it's usually because we have to go. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, there is. There is, I would suggest, putting yourself in a bubble of protection, an intention. When I go in for my surgery at this time, at this because you might forget the day of because, yeah. you know, we're very busy. So you can almost put, set the program intention prior mm. and say, I, I know who the doctor is going to be. I'm going to ask that this doctor has extra light and energy and is in a great mood. The whole staff is going to be good. But that entire room I'm going to be in is going to be protected with love, 
I am in an octahedron of love. There are no walk-ins allowed. My energy field is my energy field. I'm completely safe during that. Wow, just that simple. That simple. Set that intention. Wow. I do have clients that know that I do this and they all like send me uh, emails. I'm having surgery at this time. Please put me in that bubble. Okay. <laughs> they can do it too, but they feel better if I do it. Yeah. So I said, you do it and I'll do it. Yeah. It's hard to believe that some Joe Schmo like me, you know, could do it for themselves. Like it's kind of a hard thing to believe. This universe is all about intention. Mm -hmm. If you have the belief... You can do it. Wow. That's the problem. We don't have the belief, uh, right? I have the belief I can do it. I can do it. Yeah. People believe I can do it. I can do it. Yeah. Like you can do it. And I believe you can do it. So do it. Wow. So try this, all right? Because try this with a young child around because they can see this. Mm -hmm. And put yourself in a bubble of protection. Don't let, the, don't let the little child here, maybe a four-year-old at home, and say, I'm now going into a bubble of protection. And in this bubble of protection, no negative energy is coming through. And I'm putting my son or daughter in the bubble of protection as well. Do this in your head. That little kid is going to say, where did this bubble come from? Oh. Oh, they can see it because that it does happen. Wow. My daughter can see it. That's how I started really playing with the bubbles of protection. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I put a rainbow and she saw that. And I'm like, these totally work. So I said, tell me when they stop. Kids see these bubbles. Wow. Her job now is she puts people in bubbles of protection all the time. Okay. Right? So put yourself in a bubble of protection before you go to surgery. Before you go to surgery. So that's the big thing. And so I thought this was going to be a scarier episode because you have some scary stories to tell. But that was that was an actually very useful episode because all of us tend, you know, and our loved ones uh, sometimes need to go for surgery. So that was actually useful with some good tips that we could try. Um, I think we're going to have to go to another episode okay. to actually s sh share some of the more um, difficult to hear stories. So stay <laughs> tuned. We'll be back. <laughs> All right, everyone. Have a good one.